Hey folks, my name is Joe Barnard, and I am building a reaction control system for model rockets, so let's check it out. And we're gonna cut ahead here, because this takes a while. While this is pressurizing, I'll let you know that basically this rocket is unstable where it currently sits on this mount. It's able to rotate on one axis here, and that's the axis we're gonna be controlling. All right, so the system is pressurized. We're gonna go ahead and boot up the vehicle here. Again, we're just controlling on one axis. As it starts up, I'm gonna hold it in the center, where it'll start from. Okay, now we're in the idle mode. It's gonna wait a couple of seconds and get some measurements, and then it's gonna start the reaction control system or the cold gas thrusters. Sometimes it's... Eventually it runs out of air. Eventually it runs out of air, but it's pretty cool. So let's talk about it. And before we do that, let me just depressurize. Gotta let the air out of the system for safety. Okay, great, let's talk about it. All right, so why RCS? Let's start there. Um, why would I go with a reaction control system even though I have thrust vectoring working pretty well at this point? Well, I've mentioned a couple of times that this year in 2019, I'd like to start moving up to larger builds or just larger scales of rockets. Um, something on the order of thrusty McThrust face or larger back there. Um, and so high power rocketry, in my mind at least, this is just an opinion, but high power rocketry is about going high and fast. And both of those things are really difficult to do with thrust vector control unless your vehicle is naturally stable, like it has fins, or if you have access to military or aerospace grade hardware, which I do not. So reaction control systems are a way to sort of augment the passive stability of high power rockets. So as I move into that scale, we'll start switching over to those types of systems instead of thrust vector control. And of course, eventually what I'd like to do is use both of these systems together to use thrust vector control and a cold gas thruster system uh, in all in one rocket. But you know, one step at a time here. As I mentioned before, I am building this for larger sized vehicles, but right now I'm just doing ground testing on three inch or 74 millimeter airframes like these. Also for ground testing, I'm just using compressed air from this compressor right now. It's a lot cheaper uh, and just easier to work with while I'm doing ground stuff. But for flight, we will be moving to CO2 uh, from probably either a scuba or paintball canister. Right now for flight control, I'm just using a customized version of the signal flight computer. Um, it can only control one axis by firing one of the three, or rather two of the three pyro channels. Now I am building a dedicated computer for reaction control systems. Uh, this is going to be used for my system and another one that I'll be talking about later in the video. Um, but also, if you're building along with the landing model rocket series, that's the blip and blop computers, those should be able to control pitch and yaw uh, in a reaction control system as well. So that's what the computers are. And speaking of control, the whole system should be able to do yaw, pitch, and roll control on any vehicle. Um, so the yaw and pitch thrusters should provide about 3 to 10 newtons of force and the roll thrusters will probably be regulated down to about half that. Um, the roll axis on most of these rockets is, is just super, super sensitive. The mass moment of inertia on the roll axis is really low, so regulating that pressure down and getting between you know, one, uh, 1.5 to five newtons of force on those roll thrusters is gonna be um, a lot better for having super precision control during flight. Speaking of control, the whole system is just dead simple right now. It's a PID controller, and actually it's just a PD controller with a dead band of about uh, half a degree in the center um, and just some roughly tuned values from a simulation that I built. That said, this isn't super well suited to fly the rocket. Uh, it's just great for ground testing right now. I'll need to build a more complicated controller that takes into account the mass moment of inertia of the vehicle. It takes into account the actual thrust uh, that the system can provide and the current system pressure and a few other things. Um, so the whole controller eventually for flight will have to be much more dynamic than just a regular PD controller with fixed gains. Um, but anyway, we're, we're way deep into like control law land, so let's get out of here. Actually, one more thing about control too. So the valves that I'm using are binary. They are basically relay control. They're either on or they're off. Um, and this is fine. You might think it's not or that you can get lots of oscillation with this. But so long as your controller is, again, dialed in, that should be fine. And even if it's not, um, I think I may end up doing some type of like a PWM control um, that's pulse width modulation. So basically on and off the controller really, really, really fast to sort of almost throttle them. 
Um, it's really complicated to describe without showing it, so I probably won't talk about it too much more. But basically, there are lots of ways that we can deal with these relay style valves um, and not be able to throttle them uh, and still have a stable flight. All right, moving on, the full system is going to be super heavy. Um, I think all up with the gas on board, it should be at least one to two kilograms, uh, probably a little bit more. Uh, and you might be like, wow, that's not practical at all. You're never gonna get anywhere with that much weight on your rocket. And like, yeah, true. But the point of this isn't to be practical. Uh, the point is that it's a fun challenge and it's just fun to learn all these new things. And if also, if you're just trying to be practical, like you shouldn't be flying model rockets in the first place. Moving on, I tried to get a bunch of questions from Twitter and a few other platforms about this. So here are some of them. Uh, can you use the system for landing? Yeah, kind of. Um, the gains that you get from using this heavy of a system, like something that is one or two kilograms, the gains that you get from that in terms of your control ability don't really outweigh the cost at the current scale that I'm working at. So like if you were going to use this type of reaction control system for a landing model rocket, your model rocket would have to be larger, probably again, the size of thrusty McThrust face. So like definitely not ruling landing something like that out. Um, but for the size of, let's say, the Echo vehicle that I've been working with, um, it doesn't really make sense to put the RCS uh, package in there. Uh, I got a question too about the runtime of the system or how long it can operate for. So this is super, super dependent on like a thousand different factors. Um, the vehicle inertia, the distance between the center of gravity or the center of mass and the RCS thrusters. Um, the, let's see, like the definite, the flight profile, the launch angle, the desired correction, um, the mass of the vehicle, uh, the pressure in the system, the tank size, all of these different things contribute to how long it can run for. And ultimately, I'm not super concerned about it right now. Um, I'm going to try to just design the flight profile around what it can run on. Um, so I just don't have a solid value for that right now as the system and uh, development progresses, I'll probably have a solid estimate. I will say that I'm probably going to use a paintball size tank at around eight or 900 PSI, which is then regulated down to between one and 200 PSI for the actual thruster ports. And then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, for the roll thrusters, that'll be regulated down to 50 to 100 PSI for those roll ports. Someone else asked about the response time of the system, um, or I, I guess just the reaction time of the valve. So this is the time between when the flight computer commands the valve to open and when it actually releases the pressure. So there's a little bit of a delay there. Um, so I went ahead and I set up the high-speed camera at 1,000 frames per second, and I filmed it. Right now, I'm measuring an average of six milliseconds between when signal commands the valve to open and when it actually releases the pressure. So for reference here, the LED turns yellow when signal sends the command to the valve, and the pressure is released just a third of a second later when playing back in slow motion. And again, this is all shot at 1,000 frames per second. I've also run a few different dynamic tests on this, um, you know, whatever this, this vehicle is so far. This clip is no joke, the first test I ran, and I was just not expecting it to work this well. And here's another clip where the vehicle starts at a pitched over angle and has to correct back to upright. As mentioned before, these tests are all running off air from the compressor over here. It's about 60 PSI or so. So the vehicle has very little control over itself. Each thruster is putting out maybe one to two newtons of force. Um, so the system is very sensitive. Um, these tests aren't a great example of like how stable the vehicle will be in flight. They're really to help me iron out the bugs and just get familiar with the system. All right, so let's talk about timeline here. So the system as it stands right now is not going to fly at all. Um, we're super early in the development process. Like all of these little dynamic tests that I've shown all happened earlier today. Um, so it's just hard to predict exactly when it will fly, but I think we probably need 
at least two solid months of ground testing and simulation to really like prove out the system and make sure it's going to work well. Also, this is not the only reaction control system in the works. I'm working with Charlie Garcia, who you might remember from a past video, on uh, building a reaction control system for much higher powered rockets. So I will let him tell you about that now. Thanks for the introduction, Joe. And now for people who want to build real rockets, I have just the system for you. I've been working on an RCS system for high powered rockets. The system uses much higher pressures and higher thrust to enable you to control the biggest projects you can imagine. The system I'm working on right now has four thrusters for full two axis control over a 98 millimeter rocket. Each one of those thrusters produces about 80 newtons of thrust. The system has enough fuel for about 8 seconds of continuous thrusting, but you don't run it like that. Normally you would pulse the thrusters uh, in short little puffs in order to steer the rocket. The system is assembled out of discs stacked on top of each other, each water jet on a standard water jet you'd find in a machine shop. Only a single piece actually requires a milling operation to uh, create it, so it's very simple to assemble and put together and it uses parts that are readily available off the internet. So I'm hoping that I can make this system available to amateurs uh, for their projects where they want to use stabilization, but maybe don't want to take the mass or the diameter hit that would come with using a gimbaled system. I custom designed the valves using solenoids from McMaster Car. The valves themselves are spring-compensated single-action poppet valves, uh, so they're normally closed, and then when you apply power to the solenoid, it pulls the poppet down and opens the solenoid. It took me around probably 20 hours to machine the system, not counting all the time I had to use to remake parts that I'd already made, but made mistakes on, and had to remake, and then redesign, and then remake. Basically what I'm saying is, design the thing first and then build it, it'll save you a lot of time. To design the system, I started by writing a Python script, and this Python script took several inputs and outputs, but basically I used it to design the valves. To design the valves, I had to match solenoid forces, springs, gas pressures, poppet areas, thrust levels of the thruster, and a few other things. And that was really a lot to keep track of, so I just took notes on it all once and then wrote it into a Python script. So I could plug in any set of values I wanted and the Python script would tell me what other values I would need. And the real advantage of this is then I could continue plugging in values until I found parts that were easily available off the internet. After I had all the design values I wanted, I set about machining the device. Even after I did all the design work, it still didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it. There were a few issues that I always had to hunt down. For example, my original design for the valve geometry just didn't work. Uh, the soft seals that I had put in place tore themselves to shreds as the high pressure air flew over them and ripped themselves out of their uh, glands and then proceeded to block the valves shut. Uh, which, if you're familiar with the term FOD, is exactly why we care about having things in places they shouldn't be. Another problem I had is that stacking the discs did not create a seal the way I intended it to. So after four months of hunting leaks, I finally took the nuclear option and just welded them together. So to recap, that's four thrusters for eight seconds with 80 newtons for a four-inch rocket for your big projects. And I think that's all you need to know. Back to you, Joe. Thanks, Charlie. Anyway, there's one other thing that you might be interested in here, and it's the files to build this yourself. The parts list, the purchase links, the STL files, all that stuff is in the Patreon link down below. Um, this is all for a 74 millimeter or three inch airframe, just like this one. Um, and it is by no means a ready to fly system. If you're interested in this, it's mostly for experimentation or if you're trying to build something like this yourself. Also, this is probably not going to be the final design for the system. Um, there's lots of room for optimization here, but this is just links to the parts as they are right now. Um, so just for context, I spent about $200 all up for the compressor, the uh, valves, the tubing, the hoses, all of this stuff, um, 200 US dollars. You could probably spend about less than 100 if you already have a compressor and a couple other hoses or fittings. Um, but it's not too expensive to get started. Now these files don't come with a computer, of course. You'll probably have to build that yourself or figure out some solution there. I mean, I don't even have a computer that can control all these valves yet. That said, um, I did mention earlier that if you're building the blip and blop flight computers along with the landing model rocket series, those will be able to control pitch and yaw. Probably not roll, but pitch and yaw on the vehicle. So there's a, there's a likely candidate for a flight computer there. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, I'm also building a dedicated flight computer just for RCS. That will be different than Signal, different than Blip and Blop. There's too many computers. 
Okay, and finally, if you want to know more about this stuff, you should be following BPS on all of the different social channels. So we've got like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I post a ton on the Instagram story about development, like real time as it's happening. Same with Twitter. Facebook is, I don't know, whatever, it's Facebook. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you can follow us if you want, or you can just follow here on YouTube and you'll get like less frequent updates. It doesn't really matter. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope this was interesting, just kind of showing the development process. My name's Joe Barnard. Uh, may your skies be blue and your winds be low.